who are joining us today for Kids Church. Can anyone remember our theme for this month that we just started last week? Yes, that's right. Last week we started learning about how our world came to be a great big mess. God created the world and everything was beautiful and wonderful and Adam and Eve walked closely with God in the garden and then one day something very sad happened. Satan, God's enemy who appeared to Eve as a sneaky snake, tricked her into eating the fruit from the one tree that God said she should not eat from. The consequence of Adam and Eve not listening to God was that death came into the world and Adam and Eve wouldn't get to live with God in heaven forever. Isn't that sad? But we don't have to worry, boys and girls, because from the very beginning, God had a plan to save us through his son, Jesus. Because, because God loves us very much and doesn't want us to be separated from him forever. Let's sing our memory verse song now. mess. 
The Bible is one big story made up of 66 smaller books. The Old Testament has the first 39 books, and then Jesus comes on the scene. So you mean to tell me that we're still in Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible, and we have to wait all the way until the 40th book to learn about Jesus? Well, yes and no. Remember when we were talking about creation, we learned that Jesus is God, and that means that Jesus was with God at the very beginning when the world was created. Oh, yes, I remember that. Well, Jesus does not appear as a person with a human body until the New Testament, but Jesus has always existed with God forever. He has no beginning, and God knew from the very beginning that he would send Jesus to rescue us from sin and to make a way for us to live with him forever. So although Jesus does not come as a human person until the New Testament, there are lots of places in the Old Testament that talk about the person who is going to come and save us. And that person is Jesus. That's right, Carson. In fact, right at the beginning of Genesis in chapter 3, God tells us that on one day, one of Adam and Eve's children will crush Satan's head, which is another way of saying that someone is going to come that will defeat Satan. Can you guess who that is? That's right. As we work our way through the Old Testament, we will look for places like this where Jesus is talked about. Now, before I tell you today's story, let's practice our Old Testament Bible books. Okay, but first, could you please tell us why you have this picnic basket? Oh, I almost forgot about that. I thought that it would be fun that after Kids Church, we all went on a picnic together. I already packed the food. Awesome, I love picnics. Quick, let's sing our song so we can go get to that picnic. Suddenly I'm hungry. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second, Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job. Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon.
Our story today is kind of another sad one. It's a story about two brothers, and this story shows how sin causes a great big mess. Get comfortable and listen while I read you the story from this children's Bible. You can also find this story in your Bibles in Genesis chapter 4. So this is a story about two brothers named Cain and Abel. Eve gave birth to Cain and Abel. Abel took care of sheep. Cain worked the ground. Cain gave some things he had grown as an offering to the Lord. Abel brought some lambs. The Lord was pleased with Abel and his offering, but he wasn't pleased with Cain and his offering. So Cain became very angry. Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. There Cain attacked Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I supposed to look after my brother? So Cain went away from the Lord. He lived in the land of Nod. That's a little sad. I can't believe Cain would kill his own brother. I would never hurt Jasmine. Yeah, it is a very sad story. And although most of us wouldn't kill our brother or sister just because we were angry with them, this story shows what can happen as a result of sin when we decide to do things our own way instead of following God. Now I know what you mean when you said that sin makes a great big mess. Miss Jill, I don't understand why Cain was so mad at his brother Abel. What does it mean that they brought an offering to God? You know what, Jasmine? I think that would be a good question to go ask one of our friends. Hey, Pastor Colton, what you doing? Hi, Jasmine. I'm just practicing. I love baseball and I really want to keep my skills sharp, so taking a few swings. Want to play catch? Sure. And that reminds me of a joke. Want to hear it? Sure. What did the baseball glove say to the ball? I don't know. What does it say? Catch you later! <laughs> wow. Very funny. You want to play catch? Yeah. All right. Here. Take this glove. All right. Have you played catch before? Yes. But I have to warn you. I'm not very good at catch, but I'll try my best though. Ah, that's all we can do. Try our best. Here, I'll back up and then I'll throw the ball to you. And you catch it, throw it back. Okay. I'm ready. That's a little far. Ah. Good catch. Thanks. Hey, Pastor Colton. We have been talking about the story of Cain and Abel with the kids. And it talks about them bringing God an offering. I was wondering what it means to bring an offering to God. Oh, very good question. Ah. Oh, great throw, by the way. That's a great question, Jasmine. You know, an offering was like a gift that was brought to God. Something to say to God that you're sorry for your sin or that you love him and to bring you closer to God. Ah. Ah, almost. Hmm. Christians don't really do that anymore, do they? I'm new to this whole church thing. Yeah, Christians don't really do that anymore because, you know, it, it, it's different now than, than it was in the Old Testament. That's because Jesus came to die for our sins. He was really the final offering to God. So giving offerings like they did in the Old Testament really isn't necessary anymore. But, you know, it, whenever we give God our best, we truly love, honor, and serve God. It's kind of like giving our life to Him. Ah, I don't think I really understand. Well, take baseball as an example. God has created us in his image to be able to do all kinds of cool things. When I play something like baseball that I love and I enjoy and I work really hard at it and I give it my best, it makes God happy because I am using the skills and gifts that he's given me to honor and love him. Now, a Bible verse in Colossians says that whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all for God's glory. Do it all with your whole heart. 
Now, whenever we try our best and we work at something that honors God, that is good, that serves other people, and we do it with our whole heart as if we're doing it for God himself, and we're giving God an offering or gift, that really pleases him. Thanks, Pastor Colton. I better get back to kids' church now. It was fun playing catch with you. Yeah, fun to play with you too. We'll see you later. Did our friend answer our question, Jasmine? Yes, but I have a better question. Why was God pleased with Abel's offering and not with Cain's? Oh, that's easy. Everyone knows that meat tastes way better than vegetables. I would rather have a hamburger than broccoli any day. Well, actually, Carson, that's not why God was happy with Abel's offering. God was happy with Abel's offering because it says that Abel brought God the very best that he had. Are you curious to know what I have packed for our picnic? Yeah! All right, well, I won't show you everything right now, but I will show you this beautiful loaf of French bread that I baked. Doesn't it look and smell good? Definitely. And now I'm so hungry. Well, I will show you one more thing. I also baked these chocolate chip cookies this morning. I thought you would like them. Miss Jill, you did all this for us? That's right, I did. I love you guys so much and I wanted to make our picnic special. The meat that Abel brought but Abel brought to God was special too. He brought the best that he had and he gave it to God. Just like I worked hard to bring you the best food for our picnic. This shows that Abel was trying to please God, not himself. I guess that makes sense. If sin is when I don't listen to God and I try to do things my own way. So an offering is when I give something to God that is special to me. And I show that I want to do things God's way yeah, excellent, Jas Jasmine. So sin makes a great big mess because you've stopped listening to God, and an offering shows that you want to listen to God again. Yes, that's a good way to put it, Carson. All through the Old Testament, you will see people bringing things to God as a way to show that they are sorry for their sin and want to follow God. These things are called offerings or sacrifices, and they remind us that things are not right, that the world is a great big mess, and that we need God to rescue us. I can't wait to hear how God is going to save us from our sin. Yes, we will get to that eventually, but I'm afraid that before that happens, things are going to get worse, a lot worse. But that's a story for next week. It sounds like we're almost done. But first, can I tell a joke, please? I've got, or I've been taking this one all week. Sure, Jasmine, tell us your joke. Why is Cinderella bad at supper? Because she always runs away from the fall. Carson, you're supposed to let Miss Jill try to guess. That's okay, Jasmine. I don't think I could have guessed that one. That was a good joke. Now, how about we sing one more song before Miss Sharon comes to explain our craft for this week?
beautiful. So have fun with it and be creative, okay? Let's pray. Three, two, one, pray. Thank you, Jesus, so much for today. I thank you for blessing us all with our friends and family that we can choose to love. And I thank you for free will. Please be with all the families that are watching today and help us to have a wonderful week. Amen. Miss Sharon, we're going on a picnic. Do you want to come? Yes, please. It sounds so fun. Wait for me. Oh, don't worry, Carson. We wouldn't leave without you. Bye.